Well, it's another episode of Hermitcraft, and I've got the perfect person to bring it in. This episode on Hermitcraft. Love it. <laughs> now I need the music in my ear. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I should, I should start. Like, Impulse has <sighs> that one button he can press that just yes. plays the music instantly. I need to have that actually thinking about it you've got stuff on this server that lets me yep. do that right yep, we do i okay i i need you <laughs> you have to keep the secret from everybody uh -huh. i need you to tell me how the the one mod works where you can get jukeboxes to auto play stuff i will with teach you the ways i, will I, teach you I the have ways. A, <laughs> i have some revenge to get <laughs> yes oh the, <laughs> the, the corallus disc <laughs> i love it it's loud Go oh for it. it's not playing why is it not playing? It says it, it's it gave me an error message. Oh, for real? Oh, you might not it have said, the mod installed. I probably don't. No. <gasps> <laughs> oh my god, it's broken. Oh, something no. else for me to fix. Dang it. <laughs> blame blame the rift. I'm pretty sure the space time rift has killed all of our uh, our music yeah, mods. Yeah, that's what it is. But yeah, no, we've got to hook you up with uh, a crazy cool little custom record. You know, with the texture and everything. That's what I'm thinking. Yes, <laughs> we probably do. We probably do. Anyway, so, uh, so we're, we're, we're down here starting your episode of Hermitcraft, which mm. is... Uh, going, which you're going to have to be... recap later. I probably am. This yes. is going to be the most confusing time of your life. But the, the last six <laughs> months, the last six weeks has been the, the most confusing time yes. of my life, X. I think this is, this is basically an appendix to that. So I got a little bit of trivia, by the way. How oh, yeah? many blocks do you think we've dug out here? Oh, that's really tough because... All right, I'm trying. I'm trying to maths it out, but maths was always my worst subject in school. Um, we're it's like 130 by 130 area, so that's yes. already like oh, 100 <laughs> times 100. That's like that's 10,000. Maths 10, on camera plus. is never a good idea. It's never good, but multiply that by 12. I want to say roughly 100,000. Wow, uh, you know that's not a bad guess, but uh, you, you, it's double, 200,000. Really? Yeah. <laughs> what? Okay. I mean, big wow. numbers are uh, difficult, right? They sure are, and it explains why we've got so many chests in that room, yes. even after I let most of it despawn. You have been busy, my friend. Ooh. Oh, I sure well, have. I gave you, you that. Ga <laughs> you gave me that, and you can see how much of it I've used already, but I have been crafting and crafting yeah. and stealing some stuff from your resources, but I ran into the roadblocks of needing quartz mm. and needing iron, and uh, aside from that, and we wanted to swap around a couple of the materials that are going in here because it's just about what you've got yeah. on hand. Basically, this is um, just the beginning of what we need. For yeah, this absolute yeah. mega project, <laughs> this David monstrosity. Copperfield the fifth or something is what my David the fifth. Me. Yes, yeah, no, yeah, that's absolutely what we're calling it. Um, I, the first one was just me placing copper blocks in a field, and I called it <laughs> David the Copperfield. Brilliant. Um, but but then the second one was the automated version that I made. The third one I made on Survival Guide. The fourth one I made wow. on Empire Season Two. And now here we are on fifth. Hermitcraft season nine with David the fifth. It's yeah. it's more numbers. <laughs> more numbers. Problem, but. But uh, yeah, hopefully we can all, all get it straight. And uh, once we built the entire thing, it should be able to age about 450 copper blocks all at once. Considering how much copper I have, that is actually not a lot. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> That's what's seen, sad about I've, it. <laughs> I've, I've seen uh, the storage and, you know, one shulker box is 1,700 items or something. So it's like, yeah, yeah you're going to be able to do a shulker box in three sessions of this place. How are we kicking this off? Because I've got a magic button that I can press, right? Ah, is that yes, how you want to start it? Ones. Or do you want to explain um, a little first? There's an entire room of holograms, which we're going to try and fill in with all of these blocks. And we'll have to swap out some of the wood and some of the terracotta for the blocks that you've got handy. Um, this was the magic button, we... by the way. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was getting at. Oh, my God. It's oh, yeah, there so... we go. <sighs> it's so just yeah. fits. Wow. Yes, and it's 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 so <gasps> very redstoney, And <laughs> you can oh, fly through the innards. Mm -hmm. We have to build all of this. Oh my we god! Do. It's an absolute mega project of flying machines. It really is, yeah. Um, but they're, <laughs> they are, they're really the heart and soul of the entire thing. They're what delivers the copper to the places where it needs to age. I'm thinking we might move it one block down into the floor. Yes. And that way, like, maybe we can save on a little bit of headroom because you want to be able to walk around on top of this thing to place and break the copper, probably. But then I'm kind of going to leave it up to you how you get the copper back. Like, if you if you want to iterate on this design, if you feel like having extra piston feed tapes and stuff to collect or, or put, place the copper in place is going to be possible, then that's kind of 
on you, but uh, I'm here to provide the the template for the the big machine. I've got to, I've got to fully get my head around it before I make any modifications. The mm-hmm. only thing that I know that is, that is not terribly exciting, but uh, maybe kind of is, is like this is perfectly aligned. I kind of want to find a way to nicely hook up the rest of my base to the entrance here. Then it will be like a grand hall, and then I will keep going through the other end till it opens up to the other side where the mini game area is. So anyone ah. coming over from there to get to my base is going to have like a grand entrance, probably lots of copper blocks there, and then they'll come through this hall to get here. So it'll be wow. like a really epic reason to like come through rather than it just being a big box like in the middle of nowhere <laughs> i love that so it gets to be like a proper landmark of your base that's yes. I'm, I'm honored to be quite honest like that is a, a great honor to be able to build something like this so our objective this episode is to build david copperfield the fifth and somewhat of a minor update from me i've put in a bunch of markers i've started to clear up the materials on the ground and on the walls but the biggest development here is this i think i found the way we're going to hook things up and i'm probably going to turn this tunnel into something waterlogged and decorated at another point in time but as you'll see it's leading us somewhere and that's to the rib cage or should i say the spine i think we're going to make use of this thing again so you'll be able to fly in from the top all the way up there and then going down out into the great hall and also we can reach it from this bit here so we used to have a nether portal i ripped it out and now i guess it's going to be an entrance to the great hall yeah flying through here was a pain and maybe if all of this was waterlogged and we had a conduit somewhere nearby it might be really easy to traverse and could take you all the way down to the great field but that my friends will be a project for another day as you can see i've been busy yes very busy i've mm-hmm. i've pitched in just a little bit but you've placed most of the redstone here i guess yeah yeah no i, I love the um the warped stripped wood around the base of those it makes them look so much more like official than if they were just floating so I think yeah that's a really good uh good addition it's cool it kind of looks like every module's sort of at a point i'm just flying around with the free cam yeah. um it, it, yeah it looks like you've just got like all of them up to speed with a certain amount of redstone here is that right Seeing oh my god and i flew away <laughs> with the free cam oh, <laughs> you, oh you, it you catches me, me out so much sorry sorry yeah, you were saying that's no, fine well, I'm I'm used to being in a group because we're like flying around and doing all this stuff. Yeah, um, I I'm at the point now where I need to get observers and comparators really. So, uh... um, if Tango is able to get online later today, I'm going to deal with him for some quartz. But I have a stream coming up at three, so yeah. I'm probably going to spend a bit of that time in the Nether just getting some quartz, just in case Tango doesn't have a whole bunch. I'll probably start my stream like around five or six, which is when you usually wrap up. So like, yeah, if he hasn't pass turned, the baton. <laughs> pass the torch. Yeah, like if you've got like a quartz count and you haven't got it yet, I can I can pick that up and uh, try and yeah. get the rest of the quartz in my stream. Awesome. I also found the secret component that makes the whole thing work mm-hmm. that you failed to tell me about. That's what like that? super. It's just over this way if you want to follow me. You found him. You found the uh, the, the random horse. Component. The horse. Yes. Um. So there, there has been, there has been a black horse. Because obviously, I built this in a creative world originally, yes. right? I just copied and pasted it. I took the schematic, and Lightmatica saves the entities. And so, uh, if, if we if we click ignore entities, he goes away. But the Let's horse see. is really a significant part of this entire operation. He's it's the overseer. Tradition. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I might have to get one down here eventually. It totally startled me though, because I was placing blocks and then I sort of moved through it and I was like, oh God, there's a horse. Oh no. Wait, that's <laughs> yeah. the schematic. The, the, be- the best part about this was like, yeah, he's just sat down there and f- from further away, it looks like this sort of ominous black shape with eyes. And so I got slightly freaked out by it. Yeah. But because we've moved the schematic down a block so that this stuff is in the floor, the horse has moved down a block as well. <laughs> and so he's just sunk into it's the floor like this little. It's he's like a boat with a figurehead, you know. Yes, I like it. <laughs> it's so good. So next steps, mm. I guess, is just getting quartz then. Hi, you. Oh, there you are. You said hello <laughs> as I was literally about to like turn away from the computer, <laughs> and then I was like, oh, quick, press the buttons, make the things happen. Oh, quick, quick, be be social, be social. Yes, no, must no, be no social. <laughs> I'm now on the layer of this where I have to place all of the comparators, furnaces, and droppers before we get <sighs> into pistons and stuff like that. But all of the observers that are they, these are reading a signal that when the 
flying machine returns with all of the copper, it resets all of the counters. Got so you. the observers all facing down into this redstone line. That's what that does. Yeah, they'll get and they'll get updated and send a signal down. And and yeah, I know from the schematic which I can turn on. Yeah. Ha. Yeah. I, a, I uh, see parts of it now. Yeah. There's the furnace the, and the block. That's clever because the comparator can pull through a block from yeah. an inventory, so you kind of get a two for one there. That's something that I didn't do in my build on empires, and then <sighs> some very like very well-meaning technical folks in my chat said you know you could do that and i was like i will do that next time because that makes my job half yeah. as laborious since you got all the quartz together i figured i would perhaps work on the entrance like hooking this area up to the bit up top make that uh, yeah much absolutely better. I'll, I'll keep working on the engineering you can focus on aesthetics and you know this is your base so i want to make sure that you've, uh, you've you've got free creative license to do whatever with this hello it's going well Hi, Hello. Pixel. Uh, so the uh, the honey blocks and slime blocks are all in place, <laughs> except for the <sighs> slime block fly machines. And I'm now putting in the observers that are going to detect when the copper blocks get input and when they age. Wow. And then that's going to be counted off by these two droppers right here. Once all of the counting items, the wooden shovels, are in the bottom dropper, that comparator switches on, thanks to the side input signal from yes, that furnace that. keeping it locked for the rest of the time then that disables this redstone torch in the middle which is really like the master control thing for the entire circuit that uh turns off it should eject the copper block and hold it there so while that torch is switched off this observer doesn't do anything more Got so when yeah. the uh when the blocks get collected a second time then uh it, it shouldn't do anything until all of the dropper counters and stuff have reset Dang. so we're we're most of the way there i've got to place a lot more observers and i've got to get these second droppers in place and then it's just going to be about filling up the furnaces and droppers with items but beyond that and setting up the fly machines we're we're almost done yeah you'd be you'd be going at this like a madman look at <laughs> oh. i i did i did this the, the last hour and a half of my stream was just me placing uh comparators and droppers and furnaces wow. <laughs> by the way uh, i've been eating a couple of jaffa cakes whilst i've been sat here uh do, doing cakes. this and i now cannot see honey blocks as anything other than jaffa cake filling <laughs> <laughs> they yeah got that orange it totally is either. jaffa cake filling. orange jelly hey yeah, yeah and they do lime jaffa cakes did you know oh they do yeah around halloween don't they yeah so mm. like there's your slime now now you've got two types of jaffa cake <laughs> Brilliant. David, powered by Jaffa Cake technology this entire time. Once again, this man's been soldiering away. Feels like we actually play it quite different times, and I keep just logging in and finding out Pixel's done tons of stuff. And I think what I'm going to be helping them with this morning is filling up all of these droppers and furnaces. But uh, don't tell me they're already done. No, okay, they're not good. I do get to help some way. But before I do, I wish to update all of you with what's going on with the spine and the skull. We get to revitalize this part of the base again because the idea of using water to travel with some conduits is actually really fantastic. I will end up waterlogging all of this, which is why the roof of the jaw, the bit that I'm standing on, has now actually been completed. Because if you don't remember, there was a big old gap around here and I took the time just to place the last of those bone blocks. So then if you join the area through this spot, swimming down the spine is going to be much easier than sort of dropping in like this and trying to, you know, fly your way through it. Then the actual nether portal that we use can be hooked up like this as space on the other side to join the spine. Then of course, this storage area here. And lastly, David Copperfield down the bottom. But I might change the height of this because I kind of realized the way in which you interact with the machine is actually higher up. But that's a problem for another day. Right now we've got to fill up these droppers and furnaces. Mr. Azuma. Mr. Pixel. <laughs> Merry Christmas, I guess. Uh, yeah. <laughs> welcome. Welcome to your brand new 468 block copper aging facility. David 5.0. Feature yes. complete, and we've 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 spent basically all morning <laughs> setting it this up, putting in all of the the shovels and the droppers and the items in the furnaces. But yeah, it's ready to go. It's, it's ready to load up. It's been a Minecraft grind, you know, just that hypnotic <laughs> back and forth, crafting shovels, putting them in the dropper. 
I, I started off by putting in the wrong amount, so there's that to watch out for. <laughs> yeah, but we could. I, I, ended, I ended up grabbing those and putting them in the furnaces in the end. So I think I caught all of them, and hopefully they uh, nothing nothing should have gone to waste. So we've got stupid amounts of copper here that needs aging. <laughs> oh boy, do we! And I yeah. guess we get to fire this up. I have I have a question though. Something occurred to me when I was making the entrance here is this this is like you use it up at a higher level, right? You walk around where the yes. glass is? Mm-hmm. Mm. So really, this entrance should probably be a bit higher. Yeah, I think if there's like a walkway that you can use, then that's probably going to work out better. I think it's still kind of fun being down here in the innards of the machine and seeing it all above you like this, but you'll want some sort of catwalk that you can use to get to the, the copper loading area. So if we're going to fire this thing up, how are we going to do go about doing that? Like, We need to be up at this level, right? Yeah, yeah, and I normally just kind of hop between them, like glide hop. with the elytra a little bit, but um, I also have it set up slightly differently so that I could like jump up the side of, of these, whereas they're directly under something in this design. So yeah, it might be uh, might be a matter of, of scaffolding and, and cobblestoning our way around for a little bit. All good to go. So all you need to do is place nine copper on each of these sections of uh, glazed terracotta and then hit the button on top of the redstone lamp and you'll send the flying machine away. Okay, here we go then. Oh, oh, <laughs> and I fell down. Oh, no. <laughs> Didn't pick a good place to stand. And there it is. Now, you'd be a better cool judge going. of this, if this is working or not, than I am, right? I but think it, looks, the, it looks absolutely fine to me. The blocks are getting moved from side to side. The best way to tell is if there's any copper still attached to the flying machine once it reaches the very end, which it doesn't look like there's going to be. No, it's all good. Yep, it took all Successful. of them. Fantastic. Oh, I'm so excited because now this is like a toy that I get to play with on a regular basis. Yeah. <laughs> yeah absolutely. Oh, you're loading them up too. Let's go. Let's yeah, do I this. Can, we we can we can take both sides, and it'll it'll barely look like anything has left the shulker boxes because we're taking them from two separate sources. But uh, I reckon, yeah, we'll we'll have 400 or so blocks, and then you can come back once they're aged and do 400 more, and love it. Sooner or later, you'll you'll get through a shulker box that way. All right, then. We've we've filled everything up. I'm just going to fly around with my camera. All the blocks that can be placed have been placed. And uh, on occasion, yeah. one or two are fully oxidized already, right? Yeah, there's one over here that I, I found. The one part of the room that I think we'd missed a couple of shovels uh, because one of them hadn't been pushed out. But one over here is fully oxidized, sort of in the uh, the back corner by the entrance. And there should be a couple of others around here. They're usually pretty fast. So the machine is legitimately finished. However, when all of this stuff ages, that will be a test of if all the shovels are correctly done. And then if the flying machines bring them all back, then it's uh, all good. So I, I have some ideas for aesthetically redesigning parts of this. But otherwise, David V is up and running. <laughs> Yes, I've left you the bones, and it's up to you to put some nice clothes on him, I oh, guess. Oh, there's going to be uh, nice clothes, yeah. for sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Well, uh, yeah, this has been one heck of a project, and it's been so fun doing this with all of the 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 bits just ready to go. Like, all of the redstone... Like, I used the entire shelker box of redstone blocks you gave me, and then wow. some. I think yeah. I had to borrow a bit from your storage just to make sure we had enough, but... <laughs> We got uh, quartz from all over the place. We got terracotta from all over the place. Uh, bought honey from Hypno. Like It feels like so much of the server has gone into this room now. Yeah, it's a worthy investment. And, you know, <laughs> when it's up and running, that means all of this copper that I'm already bringing to the server, you know, like it's going to be fully oxidized. And uh, there's there's a potential business there for me now. So mm -hmm. um, maybe I'm entering the copper game. <laughs> Now, now is the time to start getting lots of honeycomb, so that people can oh. people can buy the wax along with the oxidized copper. So you heard it here, my friends. We need to build a honey farm, and I was thinking of building it in the end dimension, but it probably makes sense to build it in this area, as it's where I'm going to be AFK to get the copper, and then that way we can get some honeycomb too. And then it doesn't have to be a mega farm, because we can kind of match the rate that we get from it to the amount of copper blocks, which I'm currently tracking how long it's going to take for all of this stuff to age, and hopefully we're going to be able to build up like an average time. And yes, mobs can spawn on the occasional slime block, so we need to tweak the lighting levels in here. And then I need to build a master walkway and potentially put some more blocks around where you place the copper itself. The project is far from finished. 
And for this part that's going to link it all together, I need some conduit probes to make travelling through the water nice and safe. And all I have is just this one right here. So we need to find a way to get our hands on some Nautilus shells. We've got a bunch of projects lining up now. We've got to open up a copper shop too. Much is to happen in the near future. But for now, we're just going to wrap this one up right here. If you enjoyed it, be sure to leave a like. Thanks as always for the support, and I'll see you soon for another episode of Hermitcraft.